Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time we started to explore a fourth world in the game here, Jolly Rogers Lagoon. And this episode, we're continuing on here and our next stop here, after Kazooie just bashes Banjo's head in like she normally does, let's go ahead and make our way over to the pawn shop over here on our left. So, go ahead and grab the note and let's enter the shop. So in here, we can already see a big thing for us. We got ourselves a Jiggy. So, let's go ahead and see if we can buy it. Greetings, friend. The name's Pono. I'm the local pawnbroker. We're interested in that Jiggy in the case. Ah, yes. A real nice piece. Search a Banjo-Kazooie, so I was told. I reckon 20 gold doubloons would be a fair price. 20 doubloons? We only want the Jiggy. Not your whole shop. It's still 20 doubloons for the Jiggy. Would you like to buy it? What do you say? Yeah, we're gonna need to buy this because we kinda need this for progression, so we'll pay up. Right, friend. Let's see some gold. A pleasure doing business. Please, help yourselves. Why did he charge us 20 for this? When he entered the number into his cash register, that popped up 12. I feel like I just got ripped off. Have you got anything else interesting? Sorry, friend. The rest of the stuff's been here ages. I'll never sell some of this rubbish. Serves you right. Yeah, seriously, you ripped me off. That should only cost 12 doubloons. Wait a minute, or eight go. You just pocket it. I don't like this. I do like this Globo, and luckily for me, Globo is free. So let's go ahead and leave here. And if we turn around and go right back inside, now he restocked the store a bit. So now he's got himself a Cheeto page. Hello again. How much for the worthless old page? Far from worthless, my friend. I was told that page comes from the legendary Cheeto book. Are you sure? Oh yes. I'm afraid I won't take less than five doubloons for it. I don't get quality like that in here every day. So I see. Yeah, so unfortunately for us, we're two doubloons off, so we'll have to come back in here once we find some more money. But, it's good to know that that Cheeto page is there, so... That's the only other thing we need those doubloons for at this point. And if we enter Mumbo's hut here, look at that, more doubloons. Now we can buy that page. But there we go, we got all of the doubloons. Well done. Just for that, you can have a nice gamer pick. Yeah, so uh, there was never a reward for getting all of these doubloons in the N64 version, but in the Xbox 360 version of the game, you can get yourself a gamer pick. And on screen now, this is what the Gamer Pick looks like, so if you want to go ahead and use this Gamer Pick for yourself, then just collect all the doubloons here in Jolly Rogers Lagoon. I should mention that if you ever need to reinstall any of your extras from this game, whether it be from the stop and swap stuff, or maybe the doubloon picture, go into Help and Options, and then right down below, you got yourself Reinstall Extras. Doing this will reinstall pretty much everything. You can get your doubloon pick back, you can get the stop and swap picture, you can get the banjo theme back from the stop and swap stuff as well. So, that's a nice little thing to note, but let's go ahead and buy that Cheeto page. Welcome back. The page is still available, if you want it. I'm sure it would still be here next year. It would still be five doubloons. Do I have a sale? What do you say? Sure thing. Right, friend. Let's see some gold. A pleasure doing business. Please help yourselves. Sir, I think your cash register's broken. That still says 12. I paid you 5. You might need to take all those doubloons I gave you and invest more into your shop. It doesn't seem like it's very that up to date. Well, we got everything now from the pawn shop. We got the Jiggy, 
We got the Cheeto page. We even got ourselves a Globo. So let's go ahead and take that Globo and use it with Mumbo. But first, notice how this wall is a little discolored and has a crack on it. Shoot a grenade egg at it and it reveals a little secret cave here. And taking this cave, watch we take us into the back area of Joggy Rogers Lagoon. And notice that little cage up there. Well, this is actually the turtle area we were seeing from earlier. So now we can go ahead and talk to this turtle friend over here. Oh, I don't know what to do. What seems to be the problem, Tip Top? It's my baby. He's about 32 weeks late. Can you help? Can't you just sit on it and hatch it? I'm a reptile, not a bird. He's supposed to get out himself. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't know how to hatch eggs ourselves, so... Sorry, Tip Top. We can't really help you right now. We'll come back here later once we know how to help him, but for now, your kid's gonna be a couple more weeks late, unfortunately. We got some more exploring to do. But for now, let's go ahead and take this Globo and give it to Mumbo. Welcome again, Baron Bird. We got a Globo for you. And you must give it to Mumbo if you want my help, so please give it. Sure thing. Please just take the Globo and help me, please. We've been through this whole speech before. You don't need to keep on repeating yourself at every world, Mumbo. We know by now. Give him Globo, then he gets up, and then he does something, then he sleeps again. That, that's the whole routine. And in fact, in this world, it's probably the shortest trip for Mumbo, because all he has to do is walk outside of his house, go down a couple flights of stairs, and then use his spell on the water. So, Mumbo's power here is to just add a whole bunch of oxygen to the water supply here in Jolly Roger's Lagoon. So, basically at this point, he's making it so that we can never drown in this world. You can't get through World 4 without using Mumbo's help, but it is really, really challenging to do. Mumbo shine big light on water. It now has plenty of oxygen. Baron Bird not need the whole breath in there now. Yeah, so just like Mumbo said, basically at this point there's no way we can ever drown because our air meter will not exist anymore. The water is perfectly breathable for the Baron Bird. So that takes a lot of the challenge out of this world, but there's a lot to explore underwater. So it's really good for our sake that we can go ahead and just never worry about drowning. It makes a huge difference. So, again, you can do this without Mumbo's help, but if you do, I highly recommend you go back to Spiral Mountain and then you get the double air meter because you really will need it for this. It's really, really crucial in my opinion. Speedrunners I know can get through this whole area without actually doing the oxygenation or just getting the double air meter in general. They can just wing it which I don't really recommend people doing because of how risky that is. But you can't do that if you really are wanting to. Nothing's really stopping you, it's just not gonna be easy. So, underwater here is where our ice eggs will really come into play because there is a lot of stuff here for us to use our ice eggs on. If we swim through this little cavern down here, we'll be getting into a new area and here we are. This is the Smuggler's Cavern. This is an area we're actually in in the previous episode, and there's still not much we can do here, but I wanna go ahead and point out that there is this gate with Kazooie's face on it. So this is an area we definitely wanna remember for later. I actually didn't mean to come here just yet, but it's fine because now we got a sneak peek at something coming up. So let's just go ahead and make our way back out of this cavern and go the other direction. There's this UFO that's just kinda of sitting underwater, so that's a little strange, but can't interact with that just yet. Just like that little cage we saw back there earlier. We need something with Kazooie only in order to get inside. So we'll keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and freeze this octopus and just swim right through. This guy's kind of a pain to navigate around if you don't freeze him. So I highly recommend you go ahead and use your ice eggs here. It makes a huge difference. But welcome to Atlantis. Who knew that Atlantis was just kind of sitting here in the Isle Hags all along? Just kind of here. Convenient for me, there is a underwater warp pad, so 
Now we can come back here whenever we want from dry land. We don't have to swim all the way back down here, which is really, really convenient. Let's go ahead and grab these notes around the edges. And now let's go ahead and make our way into this little pillar and see what lies inside. We got ourselves some electrical eels here, so let's be very careful not to get zapped. Climb up this ledge here at the top, and inside this little cave is Jam Jar, strangely enough. LT or RT launches bird? Just watch her go through the water like a torpedo. Left stick to steer and A for speed. X to cancel if it's banjo you need. That'll be all. Dismissed. Jam Jar is seriously a rhyme suck in the 360 version. Man, you don't know how to rhyme anything anymore. At least the second portion of that statement was a rhyme, but the first statement? I don't know what you're trying to go for anymore. You just, you fail horribly when you have Xbox buttons to talk over. It doesn't work out well for you. So yeah, now we can go ahead and launch Kazooie like a torpedo, like Jam Jar said. So we can separate Banjo-Kazooie underwater, but it's Kazooie we can only control. And doing so, she can open up certain areas and also interact with certain things. So if we go ahead and do that now, we can go ahead and use Kazooie here to pop through this fish and grab these ice eggs. So, that's just one use case scenario of separating Banjo-Kazooie underwater. But I want to make my way over here. Because as we can see, we got ourselves a little combination over here. I kind of swam a little too far. Just want a single kick here. So, you need to pay attention here to what this little pattern is. So, I'm going to go ahead and make a note of this myself. And now... I can go ahead and refer to that because that's a password. We need to go ahead and enter that password to get into the building. So let's go ahead and activate my aiming reticle once more. And now, these are the things that we need to go ahead and interact with. We got these buckets we need to shoot eggs in. So let's go ahead and shoot over here for the first one. You know you're doing it right if you hear the right sound effect. So now I am looking for, yes, this one. Look for this symbol, shoot that. Now I'm looking for the triangle, which I do believe is around the corner. Not that side, the other side. There it is. And now it's going to be the little squiggly line. I know these are all like actual symbols. I just can't remember what all of them were called off the top of my head. Uh -huh. So let's go ahead and shoot this one. And then we end it over here. And there you go. Now we've opened up the way into this little building. So let's go ahead and make our way inside and... See what lies behind this locked door. It's a pretty clever puzzle there, and that combination is different for each playthrough, so my combination may not be the same as the combination in your playthrough. But here we are in the Temple of Fishes, and up here? That's not a fish. That's a pig. And he's holding a Game Boy camera, of all things. Hello there. Oh, hi. I'm Chris. Chris? Not very pig-like, if you ask me. Actually, it's Chris P. Bacon. Oh, I see. What are you doing, Mr. Bacon? I'm on vacation, trying to photograph those lovely paintings on the wall down there. Sounds fascinating. Oh, it is, but these awful fish keep attacking me. Why not get a spear gun? This camera was too expensive. I had no doubloons left. Perhaps you could protect me while I'm down there instead. Yeah, sure, why not? Right then. If you can just follow me down there to the bottom. Alright, well, let's go ahead and do what he says. And I recommend get into a corner. Because that will make things a lot easier for this mission. So get into a corner. Go in the first person. And then watch him sink down to the bottom. Hope you're ready. Here they come. So, basically in this mission, we have 60 seconds to protect this pig. If a single fish gets to him, then we lose. So, this is why I recommend you get into a corner, because this makes things so much easier for you to see. And if you did the stop and swap stuff, and you got yourself a homing cheat, then this mission becomes even easier, because now you don't even have to be all that accurate with your aim, because now, the eggs are just homing onto the fish. Which makes things a lot easier. It's not the most accurate in the world, you've just seen bunch of homie eggs just missed these fish, which is a little unfortunate. 
but that's why using blue eggs here is just the most beneficial. They're the fastest eggs for you to shoot out, and it's the one you're gonna have the most of. So, just stay in a corner. Homey eggs makes a huge difference here to have that sheet, and then you should be good if you're just, like I said, in the corner and looking all around, just like I am right now. This makes things way easier than just chasing these fish down on your own. Just a few more seconds of protecting the pig, and then he should be good to go. I think that will do it. I'm off back to the surface. I'm honestly surprised the Game Boy camera is working underwater. Game Boys can't last underwater, pig. I got all the shots I needed. Perhaps this thing I found earlier may interest you. You bet that interests me. That's a nice old jiggy. Well, I'm off to get these pictures printed. Bye. Let's not tell them that Game Boy camera printers aren't really a thing anymore. You can't reliably buy the printing paper for those things, so good luck getting those things printed. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world, buddy. So that area's all done. Now it's time to use Kazooie here and break open this stone wall to get into another building. And this one here is actually the building we got to have a sneak peek of when we were doing the challenge to unlock this world back in Jiggy Wiggy's temple. And all the areas I could have chose for World 4, I am not sure why they chose this one to be the one for the little challenge picture. It doesn't make any sense. There's not much really here to see. So you don't really get that much of a sneak peek of World 4. And in fact, this room is actually very useless in general because as you've seen so far, it's just a bunch of junk. The only thing noteworthy is a Cheeto page that's on this ledge right above the door where you enter. There's a problem with this page though, and it's mainly just the placement of it. It's in a really bad spot because we can't reach that natively. You're supposed to wait until you get a move from World 7 to get that page. It's a very long wait. Luckily for us, there is another way we can go ahead and get that Cheeto page. So, I already showed back in World 3 when we learned how to use the split up pads, that with Banjo, you can go ahead and use his attack in the air to get a second jump. So, using this ability, we can go ahead and grab this Cheeto page much earlier than the game anticipates. I highly recommend you just do this now because that Cheeto page is one of the easiest in the whole game to forget about. And waiting until World 7 just to get a power to get a stupid Cheeto page of all things, it's not worth it. I don't mind backtracking to Worlds for Jiggies, but for a Cheeto page? No, we're going to do our very best to get it as early as possible. And I don't really feel bad for cheating there because, again, you have to wait so long in order to get that page. It's not worth it. But that's pretty much all that was in that area, and we have one more building here to explore in Atlantis. But... I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. So, with that said, next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we'll continue exploring Atlantis here and see what else is left here to explore. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>